hi guys welcome back but if you're new here it is ruth with the k and welcome to my channel on this channel we'll talk about beauty skincare lifestyle and all of that stuff so if this is something that you're kind of into or you like to see then definitely want to subscribe so today is another episode of girl talk So if you haven't seen my previous video where I spoke about what they don't tell you about your vagina, then you definitely want to see it because I dropped some valuable information in that video, you know, tips, what they don't tell you, you know, how to take care of your vagina and all of that stuff. But guys, do not go there right now. Wait, you want to watch this video first before going to that video, okay? I'm going to link it in the info card above me and also in the description below me. So today I'm going to be sharing my feminine hygiene routine. You know how to stay clean fresh and comfortable down there you know i also want to say that i'm not a gynecologist i'm not a medical professional and i'm only sharing what works for me and also there is no one way or one method of doing things you know you want to try different methods and see what works for you so girls you want to treat your downstairs the same way you want to treat your face the only difference is that you know our face is out there in the open but our vagina and our vulva is what i'm trying to say is that you want to take care of that place properly and trust me once you do that i mean your body will thank you for it and the first step in my routine is exfoliating yes exfoliating yes you can exfoliate your downstairs so exfoliating is your best defense against ingrown hairs i mean not just for your female part but even your underarms when it comes to shaving you know you want to exfoliate to help to remove dead skin hyperpigmentation you know ingrown hairs and all of that stuff so by exfoliating you're removing dead skin and also all those hair that have gotten trapped into your skin Ingrown hairs can be very painful and uncomfortable, you know, because your hair has gotten trapped into your skin and isn't growing the way it's supposed to. I use these gloves to exfoliate this. I've heard people say that they use some scrub, sugar scrubs to exfoliate down there, and I'm like, I don't know about that, you know. <laughs> Personally, I don't want to put anything that could potentially harm my female parts, you know, I don't want that. So I only use soap with this with this sponge basically it's kind of like abrasive so it's like the best it's not so harsh at the same time you know i want to use a gentle soap when exfoliate so you just want to ladder up the soap down there and use this exfoliating glove to just like kind of exfoliate this will help to remove the dead skin there that is trapped there so also I have to loosen up the skin before hair removal so you also want to exfoliate first before the hair removal you know when you remove the hair and exfoliate your skin down there is very sensitive so you could be prone to injuries cuts you know bumps you know you just don't want to do that at all so you want to exfoliate first before the hair removal and the next thing in my routine is the hair removal so after exfoliating i then proceed to get the hair out of the way and for this process i use beets people prefer to use nair and I don't know i've never used nair before so i can't really keep my review on it but i've used it for years and i've never had any problem with it so i'm fine with using it there are people that prefer to shave as well but personally or generally when you shave you're more inclined to get ingrown hairs and hyperpigmentation and you don't want this for yourself because it's very uncomfortable especially when you shave in the wrong direction your hair is growing you are prone to get ingrown hairs you know cuts you know bombs all those things will be down there and it's not a good sight to see so just to prevent all of this i like to use hair removal and even with the hair removal you're still likely to get you know hyperpigmentations and ingrown hairs but at least you are not tugging and pulling on the skin so this kind of like reduces it to a level which is a great extent so guys you do not want to ever use shaving cream in those sensitive parts because yo it will burn <laughs> it will burn and it's not even good for your vagina it could cause you infection you know vaginal discharge you know and yeast infection and all of that stuff so you do not want to do that you want to use a razor you want to just lather up soap in that area to just soften the skin there a bit and gently tug on the hair in those sensitive areas that's the only place i use my shaving stick and i make sure to shave in the direction that my hair grows i mean it's tasking what i mean guys it's worth it you know how it's uncomfortable for you to bend down there and you know twist your arms just to shave that area guys it's an extreme sport because of this you want to invest in a good 
shaving stick. I mean, not the cheap ones. You want to invest in a relatively, you know, affordable or kind of like, you know, worth it kind of shaving stick, you know, because you are kind of like shaving the sensitive areas. So you want to be careful and you want the blade that will not irritate your skin. Then I use the gillet. I like to use the men one because I feel like it's very powerful. This one, guys, the story of the shaving stick. Eh? So I went to go buy like shaving stick, like, you know, a relatively good one, not cheap. But I got to the counter and they told me, I didn't even know, in fact, I didn't even know until I got home. And I realized that it was 5,000 for this stick, guys. Well, I mean, 5,000 in Naira because I speak Nigerian. Like, oh my God, just buy shaving stick for 5K. Like, yo, I mean, it's worth the investment. But at the same time, it's very good, guys. Oh my God, it is so good. It just gets the job done, you know. It has this 3D motion when you're shaving. It works on soft skin, sensitive skin. I mean, I'm not trying to like sponsor Gillet, but I mean, you guys get the idea. All I'm trying to say is you want to invest in a good shaving stick because your daily part is very important and you want to treat it with utmost care. Like you don't want to hurt it, irritate it and all of that stuff. So you want to be very careful and gentle because you don't want to feel uncomfortable after doing all this. You want to feel comfortable. And the next thing in my routine is moisturizing. Guys, this is one thing that I underestimated. Like I never thought that we should be doing this. I didn't even think that people did this. You know, I'm like, people moisturize down there? Really? You know, well, guys, yo, this is one thing that you have been missing on. So you want to moisturize your vulva like you would your other body parts. So moisturizing helps to prevent dryness, irritation, flaky skin. You know, it helps to just protect the skin down there. You know how you would just moisturize your face because you feel like it feels dry. So guys, you also want to do that to your downstairs. Sometimes after shaving, after hair removal, after exfoliating, you know, we could get skin irritation down there because like I said, that skin down there is very sensitive. So it easily gets irritated. But moisturizer helps to just like, you know, give it some moisture. But personally, for this, I use coconut oil. You could use virgin olive oil, but you want to use a natural oil, nothing scented. Don't buy any over the counter, you know, cream because you don't know what chemical is in there or what perfumes or scent. Like I said, you don't want to use anything with scent in your downstairs. So you want to moisturize it after all of these things. And guys, trust me, <laughs> your downstairs will thank you. You feel so much comfortable after. Guys, just try this and let me know. So the next thing in my routine is panty liners. And I wear these just because in the past, most of my expensive underwears I've gotten you know, ruined because of the acidity of my vagina. So my panties have this bleach stain, you know. So basically, this happens when your vagina is acidic and this means it is LD. A LD vagina ranges between 3.8 and 4.5. So I'm like, oh my God, not again. You know, it's so annoying when you have to toss away these sexy, you know, nice panties, expensive panties, but at least I know that my vagina is LD. So yeah. So anyway, just to reduce this, I like to wear my panty liners often. I only wear this during the day, but at night, I don't even wear underwear at all because guys, honestly, we need to let that bleed breathe. Like we always trying to cover it up, trying to protect it. I know and it's good to protect it, right? But when you're sleeping, you want to allow for it to breathe properly. No panties, no panty liners, nothing, nothing. Just let it breathe. So some other things I'd like to mention in this video is also, guys, I've said this before, but I'll say it again because it's very important. You do not want to douche. You do not want to wash your insides, which is your vagina. You cannot wash your vulva. So the other thing that you want to wash your vagina with the hopes of getting it clean you only do more harm than good to your vagina because by doing this you're going to get prone to yeast infections and you don't want that for your vagina i mean we're preaching vagina health right here today so you do not want that you know you only want to wash your vulva with unscented soaps you know when it comes to your vulva when it comes to downstairs about everything vagina anything you want to think unscented unscented wipes unscented tissue unscented soaps you know, even down to washing your panties, your underwears, you want to use on scented soap because this will also help to prevent, you know, any infection whatsoever because anything with perfume, anything with scent isn't good for your downstairs. I mean, our vagina cleans itself with the discharge that comes out. You also want to make sure that you're wearing cotton panties. Aside them being just comfortable, they are breathable. It helps your vagina breathe. Some women may have chronic dampness 
and wearing underwear that doesn't allow for the vagina as you breathe will cause yeast and other infection. So the next thing is changing your underwear often. So for starters, no medical evidence shows that you know wearing old underwear is unhealthy or a risk factor to getting a vaginal condition. Your underwear doesn't have an expiry date. They are not like toothbrushes and they don't need to be changed often for bacterial reasons. But as long as you're doing a fresh pair every day, as long as you're washing them after each use, then you can wear them until they are old. But if your panties or underwear are dysfunctional, and I mean like the elastic is gone, it has holes and you know, it's torn, then it's time for a change. So guys, this has been my routine. Very straightforward, very easy to follow. And I hope this will help you to improve your vaginal health i hope it's going to help you to you know to be more conscious of your downstairs and you want to treat it like you would treat any other part of your body your skin your face anything guys let me know what other routines you were doing to help to improve vaginal health let me know in the comments down below and i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like share subscribe and all that jazz and until next time bye